The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important to know that in the last day, what Satan is doing in our world, so that we don't fall prey to his system. Now, what's really interesting to understand that the root of all false religions, the root of all conspiracies even, the root of everything will come down to one system in one location. It's in Babel. That's why what you're going to notice, how God condemns Babylon all over the Bible. He hates Babylon immensely because it goes from a history from beginning to end. As a matter of fact, you got to understand this, is that because of Babylon, that's how Roman Catholicism was formed. Because of Babylon, that's the reason why that you got the New Agers coming out, the Gnostics, the Essenes, and then later on, Judaism itself was corrupted in its religion when Jesus Christ came down. So we're going to look at Genesis chapter 11. We're going to look at verse 9. Or verse 8, So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they, lay, le, and they left off to build the city. And therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So notice that there's a specific location where it was one world. But what did the Lord do? What God Almighty did is that he scattered them. He wanted to get rid of this one world. Ring a bell with today's day and age, one world currency, one world religion, new world order, etc., etc. So the Lord knew that there was something going on here, a one world idea that God had to wreck. This is the root of everything one world today, and new world order, and conspiracies, and one world religions, especially Catholicism. Why over here? Because of this particular individual. Go to Genesis 10. Genesis chapter 10. Strange individual. And notice that he comes at Genesis 10, 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim, and Foot and Canaan. Now, what's very interesting is that if you watch my other video, there's something very weird and dark that happened with Noah and Ham that was very demonic. And then from there, we see a lot of the strange Nephilim and giants and weird kind of creatures from Ham's seed. You will see that all over the book of Deuteronomy and Numbers. What's very interesting is that from this line came out this being. This being, uh, he could be Nephilim, he could be a regular human, but he is definitely the first type of the Antichrist. He is the first horn of the seven-headed dragon. He's the first head of the seven-headed dragon. His name is Nimrod. Look at Genesis chapter 10. From the Ham seed, verse 7, and the sons of Cush, Seba and Havilah and Sapta and Rama, Sabdika and the sons of Rama, Sheba and Dedan, <laughs> excuse me, and Cush begat who? Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. Look at that. He's becoming mighty and great. Isn't it interesting where it says he began to be a mighty one in the earth? It's kind of similar with Genesis 6, where the sons of God intermingled with the daughters of men, and they produced mighty men of old, men of renown. It could be a reference to him being Nephilim. I'm not sure. It could be a reference to him just being mighty, or there could be something more. But keep reading. Verse 9. He was a mighty what? Hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord. <clears throat> so notice right here that before the presence of God, he was a hunter. So this is not a reference to him being a hunter of the Lord. No, it's before the Lord in God's presence. So as if that he's violating before his presence. But if you look up every time the Bible mentions about hunt and hunter, is it a positive or a negative reference? It's usually a negative reference. It's usually as a reference to hunting down people. Why was he a hunter? Because he was a hunter of souls, you got to understand. He was a hunter of souls. If you study the history of Nimrod, 
and it is a historical fact. There is so much information where this man was the birth to all sorts of religions today. So all these weird doctrines you hear and all the root of conspiracies in one world and different religions all come from this location. If you read, if you continue reading verse 10, and the beginning of his kingdom was what? Babel. Over where? In the land of Shinar. So this is where Babylon is first mentioned, right here. This is ever since what? Ever since the beginning after Noah's flood, the beginning of my, mankind. During the second beginning of mankind after Noah's flood, no, notice how the devil was starting something all over again. Now what did God do? God scattered them. But even though he scattered them, if you know your history, Nimrod's religion spread through all other parts of the world because he had a wide influence. The evidence is all you have to look at, all you have to do is look at Chinese religions, you have to look at uh, Hindu religions, look at Native American religions and all sorts of religions. All religions have some sort of deity uh, where it relates to the sun and it also relates to a woman with a child, Semiramis. Nimrod had a mother named Semiramis. I'm not sure if I spelled her name right. But hence, why does it carry on to the Virgin Mary later on? Why does it carry on to Jesus later on? It's going to show something strange here. So because of that scattering, what did God do? God had to send down Abraham. Why? To do a separate nation unlike other nations. But if you know the history of Israel during the time of the book of Judges, Israel always wanted to be like what? The other nations. So this Babylon religion was spreading like wildfire. As a matter of fact, Catholic confessional and the Masonic Oath, they all trace to Babylon. It's very interesting. Semiramis priests had those confessional booths as well. It's very strange. As well as uh, some sort of blood oath, like the Masons do. They're all related. See, it's very interesting. Masons, Catholics, the occult, they're all related somehow. It comes from a root source. Think about it. Where do Masons, Catholics, New Agers, occults get all those beliefs and ideas from? It has to come from a source. Even if it's mythology, mythology cannot happen unless there's a source. And I took mythology classes at the liberal university. Came from somewhere, there's no doubt. Yeah, you're enjoying this, aren't you? <laughs> Abraham had the people, the Jews. This would explain why Satan infiltrated a lot of Jews today, and you'll see them involved in conspiracies with Rothschilds. Hollywood, etc., etc. Why? Because this is now God's nation. What do you think Satan's going to do? Oh, I'm content with the other nations. I'm going to leave these Jews alone. No, he wants to take, this is God's chosen people. Now, the problem with some of these weird people of replacement theology is that they insist this cannot be God's chosen people. Why? Because they're so evil. They're so wicked. There's a lot of conspiracies, a lot of this Babel stuff that's connected with this. This is a no-brainer. Read the book of Judges. What were the Jews doing ever since the book of Judges? They were following the Babylon religions like the other nations. Read the book of Jeremiah. Who are they making cakes to? Queen of Heaven. Queen of Heaven. And look at the book of Judges. Look at this, this Babylon religion has been revived. This Catholic religion has been revived. Look at the book of Judges, chapter 17. Chapter 17. <clears throat> now look at this. <coughs> Excuse me. Micah 17, verse 12. And Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his what? priest and was in the house of Micah then said Micah now know I that the Lord will do me good seeing I have a Levite to my priest so he has a priest and not only that he has idols if you look at verse <clears throat> 5 verse 5 
Notice that he has house full of gods, idols. Look at verse 4, idols. Now look at verse, isn't this something really interesting? Look at verse 10. Micah, when he made him his priest, what did he say? And Micah said unto him, dwell with me and be unto me a what? Father and a priest. See, this Roman Catholic thing is traced somewhere. Now, I don't know if people know this. So then the first time we see Genesis 10. The second time, uh, Genesis 10 and 11. The second time is Judges 17. Nation of Israel were following this. But now a really strong branch came through the tribe of Dan, which is why it is very interesting the tribe of Dan is not mentioned at the book of Revelation chapter 7 of the 144,000. The tribes of Israel are mentioned, but not the tribe of Dan. Do you know why? This Levite priest at Judges 17 did something with the tribe of Dan. Look at chapter 18. Chapter 18. Now look what the Danites did with this priest. You're going to look at Micah chapter, uh, not Micah, excuse me, that's the name of the guy. We're going to look at Judges chapter 18, and we're going to look at verse 27. And they, the Danites, took the things which Micah had made, see the, pre, uh, the, the images, <coughs> and the priest which he had, the Roman Catholic father, Roman Catholic priest, and came unto Laish, unto people that were at quiet and secure. And notice right here that at verse 29, and they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan their father, who was born unto Israel. Now it's in Israel. They have what? In verse 30, the graven image. They have the priesthood. And the children of Dan set up the graven image. And Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his what? Sons were what? Priests to the tribe of, Le uh, to the tribe of Dan. Look at verse 31. And they set up Micah's graven image which he made all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. Look at this. All the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. Ever since they built up a priesthood now. As a matter of fact, this is very interesting. Do you know where you're going to trace a lot of Catholic paganism during ancient civilization and during the early church? It came from the northern region of Israel. But who's in the northern region of Israel? It's Dan. And from Dan, it spreads out toward the Mediterranean region. And toward the Mediterranean region, it starts to spread out even more. It's very interesting. So now we see a second account with the Jews. Right here. Dan. Another account. Let's look at Matthew 23. Matthew chapter 23. When Jesus came down, he even knew there was this strange paganism in the Jewish religion. And they were not following the law of Moses, the Old Testament. So now it infiltrated Jews. Oh, the Jews are really evil and wicked people. They're high on the ladder. Well, of course, it's a no-brainer because who is Satan's going to pick? These pagan nations that were already infiltrated? Or is he going to pick God's chosen people? No-brainer. In fact, the Bible says God's chosen people did more wickedly than all the other nations in some verses. What are you going to do with that? Yet the verse says those are still God's chosen people. <laughs> because let's use a no-brainer uh, example. You're a saved child of God. You're a saved chosen person of God. You don't think you're capable of being used by the devil? If you don't think so, you're very gullible. You're yeah. very vulnerable. Right. You do know once you yield into sin one time, it leads you further, further down that you never thought you'd commit. Now look at Matthew chapter 23. Look what Jesus said. Verse 2, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, so they proclaim true Judaism through Moses. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. So a lot of the, the things that they do is Judaism from the law of Moses, but there are some things that are not. Look at verse 5. But all their, their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the border, uh, borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms and feasts and the cheap seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called the men rabbi, rabbi. Now what does God think about this? Look at the verse. 
But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. So look at that. God does not want them to follow some of the things that the Pharisees were doing. It's not something that God approved what they were doing. As a matter of fact, if you read verse 9, it's very interesting. You see Judaism here, but a little bit of verse 9. And call no man your what? Father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. There's a little bit of Babylon going on at Matthew chapter 23. Interesting. Little bit of Babylon. As a matter of fact, before Jesus came, at the close of the Old Testament to the beginning of the New Testament, people, Bible preachers know this. There's approximately 400 years of silence. During these 400 years of silence, Judaism was infiltrated with all sorts of paganism. It's like really messed up. In fact, <clears throat> what did Jesus say at the book of Matthew? He even said one time that they followed the traditions more than the scriptures concerning about the washing of hands, etc. See, they were following tradition here, not the word of God. I, uh, let me double check. I think it's Matthew chapter 13. I just want to make double sure. Okay, so I can't find it right now, but there is a passage in Matthew where Jesus said that they prioritize their tradition more than the scriptures. So there was some sort of paganism, some weird stuff going around during that time. There's no doubt about it. We're also going to look at Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. So you see that it's no surprise you're going to see Jews involved in a lot of conspiracies, powerful elites, because the devil's infiltrating, and it's Babylon religion, Babylon religion. In fact, <clears throat> uh, there was a famous Jewish rabbi that said that masonry is very close with Judaism. So there's a lot of symbols that are very similar and strange. Now we go to Revelation chapter 17 here. That's why in the future, Babylon is still there. It's not gone. Babylon is still there. Why? Because its, it's system went from beginning to now. And this is very plain. Who is Babylon here very plainly now? It's Rome. Babylon has settled from ancient nations, and then the Jews were borrowing some of it, but then it hit Rome right here finally. It hit Rome. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 17. Very plain, verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, Catholic, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, Catholic, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations, Catholic. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery what? Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Verse 6. The woman was drunken with the blood of the saints. That's Rome, undoubtedly, Catholic. Verse 18, the woman which thou sawest is that what? Great country? No, city. What city in the world is religious and has political power? It's the Vatican. So it's very plain, this is Catholic, Catholic. It screams Catholic all over. That's why it makes sense when you study from ancient Rome till today. You see Jesuits and the Knights of Malta infiltrating all over through conspiracies and if you go to high elite masonic clubs you'll see some of their organizations connected with the roman with some catholic clubs right there some of them are joined together which is very interesting some of the members who go to a catholic club they'll be a part of a masonic club uh, alberto rivera mentioned that one of his superiors when he kissed his ring a catholic superior he had a masonic symbol all all borrowed from c Babylon. That's why they're all related. See that? They're all related because they all get from Babylon. And the Bible says Rome is the mother of Babylon. So she has to be top. She has to be the mother. Well, what about the Jews? What about the Masons? What they are is that they are children. What about America? It's children. Yes, if you go from an aerial point of view, it's very interesting. When you look at DC, you'll see a, a, pen, a, a pentagram sim, symbol. You'll see an obelisk at Washington, D.C., just like the Vatican has an obelisk. 
you'll see you'll see Masonic symbols throughout Washington DC keep your eyes open when you take a tour throughout Washington DC Masonic symbols and what you're also going to see is Masonic symbols in Jerusalem as well when you go to Jerusalem and you look at some of the government buildings Masonic symbols see all related all related you know why Babylon has been going conspiracies and elites has started ever since where <clears throat> and it's what one world so right here what's gonna happen we all know what's gonna happen at Revelation what's gonna happen right here one world one world no surprise 